The City of Chilliwack opposes the reroute application. The proposed route is much closer to City Wells than the BC Hydro route and puts the pipeline in the capture zone of the city's drinking water wells. That means that any contaminants released from the pipeline could flow into the wells. The city is the largest supplier of water in the Chilliwack area. We supply approximately 80,000 people now and anticipate that this number will grow to over 100,000 over the next 20 years. Most of the city's drinking water comes from the Sardis Vetter Aquifer. This is an extremely significant and vulnerable water source. It's also an excellent quality water source. It's simple to treat and it has great taste. As you know from our materials, we've received numerous awards for our water. We'd very much like to continue using it. And by the way, you've all been enjoying it. The city has eight wells in the Sardis Vetter Aquifer. The current approved capacity of these wells is 1,095 liters a second. Typically, the city keeps one of the wells on standby, but we expect that we will need to pump at full or near full capacity as demand grows. We have applied for groundwater licenses for the eight wells at the full approved capacity and anticipate that the province will issue licenses for this capacity. We've heard several times that the aquifer is vulnerable and complex. Over the past two decades, we've commissioned numerous studies by reputable professionals <laughs> about the Sardis Vetter Aquifer and the city's drinking water system. Most recently, we've commissioned Golder and Associates to prepare an update of our groundwater model, originally completed in 1997. I want to point out a few concepts from the 2017 Golder Report to explain the city's concerns about the reroute. Point number one. The groundwater wells have a capture zone, a portion of the aquifer from which groundwater is derived by pumping a well. An understanding of a well capture zone is required to manage and protect groundwater resources. Point number two. Golder estimated that the reroute is within or very near the city well capture zone. That means that spills and leaks from the pipeline could flow into city wells. I understand, I think, that capture zones expand vertically and horizontally with increased pumping. So it's likely that the more we pump, the greater the capture zone will be. And it could be that the situation will progressively get worse as the demand for water increases. The more we pump, the more risk there is to residents of Chilliwack. Point number three. We asked Golder to consider the effect of a hypothetical spill from a pipeline on the city's water wells. Golder's preliminary pipeline leak scenario show that a spill may reach the wells as quickly as 126 days. This is a very short time to assess the situation, close one or more wells, arrange for alternate supply, um, it's a bit daunting. We provided all our reports, including the draft Golder Report, to Trans Mountain in the hopes that these <clears throat> will be a good starting point for Trans Mountain's investigation of the risk that the pipeline will pose to the city's drinking water system. We've brought our concerns to Trans Mountain's attention numerous times. <laughs> My apologies, Trans Mountain's with the possessive seems to be befuddling me. But we did not get a substantive response. I'll give you an example. On January 23rd, 2017, I wrote to Ms. Hawthorne and let her know that we have engaged Golder and Associates to update our groundwater studies. In the letter, we let Trans Mountain know that Golder Associates would be updating its capture zone analysis and that the updated capture zone are likely larger than we thought. To quote from the letter, if this is the case, there is a high potential that both the existing and the proposed pipeline could be located within the municipal well capture zone. If the pipeline is within the updated municipal well capture zone, both minor and major leaks would represent a concern. That was a year ago in January of 2017. 
we would have expected that the information we provided to Trans Mountain would prompt them to investigate the city wells and the current and anticipated capture zone. We would have expected a considered conservative assessment of the negative impact. Instead, we received a draft technical memo from Waterline. The memo generally speaks about aquifers, such as the Sardis Vetter Aquifer, cities such as the city of Chilliwack, and capture zones for general municipal source wells. The memo concludes that conceptually the city's water resources are protected. Conceptually, all will be fine. But what does this actually mean for the city of Chilliwack wells? Beyond concepts, we are not assured that Trans Mountain understand the impacts on our wells or knows whether the pipeline is inside or outside of our capture zone. Suffice to say, the memo did not alleviate our concerns. I would like to address a point that was made a few times by the Trans Mountain panel, that the city had expressed its preference for a single route along the existing pipeline corridor. This is true. In general, we don't disagree with this approach, but it was never specific to the area we're discussing today. At the time we provided written comment on the pipeline in August of 2015, the only route for this spread was the BC Hydro route. We did not recommend any changes to that routing. The city comment at the time recommended that a single route along the existing TM related to South Sumas Road. And this came about as a result of Trans Mountain wanting to deviate from their existing route through the Chatkin First Nation. I believe it was mentioned by their panel earlier today. They wanted to deviate from the Chatkin First Nation and route their pipeline along a local municipal road called South Sumas Road. This is well to the east of the portion that we're discussing today. My last point relates to the concrete details about the leak detection and the spill response system in the reroute area. Trans Mountain has generally described what they plan to do, but we have little detail about how these will work. In particular, how will these work now that the proposed route is closer to the wells? Again, it seems there's a difference between concepts and function. We would like to know how long it takes to detect a leak, what steps are taken when a leak is detected, what is the human system behind the detection, have these measures been used in other locations, and how have they performed? In short, the proposed leak detection system needs to be communicated to Chilliwack. We would ask for sufficient detail to be able to do a peer review of the leak detection system and know enough about it so that we could explain it to the members of the public. Currently, we can't. We have no information about how the system actually works. In summary, spills happen. We can all agree on this. So do accidents. We could also agree that if a leak or a spill happens in the capture zone of the city wells, it will end up in a well. If that happens, the contaminants could reach the well in about 126 days. This is real and a little bit alarming. The risk of a leak puts our water system in jeopardy. The risk of a leak affecting our well field is so much higher if you put the pipeline in the capture zone. I am not a hydrogeologist. For me, the way the well and the groundwater interact is a matter of science, a matter on which scientists can complete studies and write reports. But as part of the city, I am responsible to supply clean water to tens of thousands of people to drink, cook their meals, bathe, water their gardens. It has to be safe. We have to err on the side of caution. We must be conservative in our analysis. The risk of error is too high, and the consequences of error can be catastrophic. That concludes my opening statement. Thank you.